Fish Friday, Lenten season, we're all looking for fish recipes. And while mommy would do something similar, she wouldn't use sardines in tomato sauce. This is something I never grew up eating, but after I moved to Canada and I was frequenting my Guyanese friend's home, they would make this. And funny enough, the tomato, the sardine, they also have a soup that they would do. Trust me, um, if you're familiar with that sardine soup, I'd love to hear your take on it. But anyways, the sort of Marshall sardine and tomato sauce. And what I went ahead and did is I opened up the can. Yeah, it comes in the can. I separated the tomato sauce and the fillets of uh, sardines because I wanted, and you'll see here, here's a prime example. I removed the middle bones, but I kept them. I, I was very gentle, be very gentle with it. Um, when you're handling it, yeah, there'll be a bit of a funk to it. Uh, that's just the nature of seafood in a can. But we also need some lemon juice, a tiny bit of curry powder. The full recipe printable will be available at CaribbeanPod.com within the next 24 hours or so. Some bell pepper, some scallions, some of you call it spring onions, some of you call it green onions. Um, well, yo, trim big onions, save. A medium onion sliced up, some parsley, some more tomato, just, and here's the thing, as a kid growing up on the islands, you know, Good Friday, mommy would make a can of um, salmon similar to this, you know, one can, and she would stretch it for four children, my dad and herself, of course, there was green banana and yam and dasheen and steamed pumpkin and, and, and plantain and all that on the side, but the point is, to help stretch it for more people, this is why I'm adding the tomato and the um, the bell pepper. I also have a scotch bonnet pepper here. That's a green scotch bonnet pepper that I cut up into quarters. And I'll explain later why I cut it up into quarters and why I chose a green one. Some black pepper. I'm going to be using some coconut oil and some salt. And that's it. Now, if you wanted to add more things, if you wanted to add some cabbage in here, some zucchini, um, anything along those lines, any sort of vegetable, you can add it. Totally up to you. I've got a tablespoon of coconut oil, medium flame. In goes the onion, bell pepper, scallion, the scotch bonnet pepper. And the reason why I like using a green scotch bonnet pepper is because I get a ton of flavor from it without that raw heat. The green one simply means it's not fully mature yet. So you don't get that that massive kick when you uh, when you add it to dishes. Some fresh thyme, and of course that tiny bit of curry powder. Again, the full recipe will be in its principal format at CaribbeanPot.com. I'm gonna turn my heat down to medium low because I don't want to burn anything. If you wanted to add some garlic in here, proper thing. I'm gonna hit that as a stir just to make sure. Everything gets in contact with that hot oil. We incorporate all those flavors. And on that sort of medium low heat, we're gonna cook this for about three minutes just to soften up everything. And of course, we need a good dose of black pepper in there. The kitchen should have a lovely aroma of that. You know, the spices which makes up a curry powder. It's so brilliant, man. So adding that just a little touch of curry powder makes a huge difference in here, in my humble opinion. Some sea salt, and I'm not going too heavy with the salt because I know these sort of canned, anything in the can from fish to fruit to vegetables, yo, aki, they're all packed with a lot of sodium. So always be mindful of the reserved tomato sauce. Here is where I'm gonna add it back in here. I'm gonna give this a rinse and a quarter cup of water. I'm going to turn up my heat just a little bit just to bring this up to a boil. And we're almost there. This doesn't take long at all. Like two minutes just to heat up at the tomato sauce and for it to add its own little you know, flavor value, I guess, to the pot. At this point, we're just going to, again, bring it up back up to a sort of a simmer. Give it about two or three minutes. And then I want to maintain the sort of integrity of the tomato so I'm gonna tuck the tomato in there give it about a minute or so I don't want it to melt out too much 
And if you wanted to add some julienne carrots in here, you could have started off with some julienne carrots as well too. Totally up to you what you add in here, but I'm just giving you the basics as it was taught to me by my Guyanese friend. Here is where now I'm just gonna tuck in the tomato. Let them soften up a little bit and the acidity will bring a lovely balance to everything here, yeah? I'm putting a ton of tomato because I love tomato, but you can hold back. And this is why if you add, I'm just gonna clean up just a little bit. If you add some crushed garlic in here, that tomato and garlic and the onion, everything goes together. You give that a little shaky shake. And yo, again, we're almost done. What we're gonna do next is tuck in the pieces of uh, sardine in there. You can crush it, but I much prefer it whole. And you can enjoy this with, you know, like I said, ground provision, even boiled green banana if you want dumpling, rice, um, roti, totally up to you. My favorite, boil and fry cassava and this, or steam rice. And I good, I good. Hit that another quick little stir. I'm trying to be gentle, but you know, if you wanted to mash things up and add some more water, get more gravy, it's totally up to you, yeah? This is why we have so much going on here. My friends, the fillets of sardines, just be very gentle. Tuck them into that sauce, just like so. And then, we're gonna allow that to heat through. We're gonna hit that a bit of lemon juice, some parsley, and then, yo, properly done. What I would do at this point, after I tuck it in there, I'm gonna scoop some of the sauce on, onto everything. Be sure to scrape all that juice down in there. And I'm gonna put the lid on it just to allow it to heat all the way through. Give that a nice little shake, shake. In goes that lemon juice. Just gonna move this around just a little bit because I want the acidity and the freshness of the citrus to make its way into the sauce. And of course, the parsley I spoke about, I'm gonna mix that in as well. But you all understand what's going on here, right? <laughs> Sup soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I mean, trying to tell people the email address, them butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it. And, Tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene? Irene. And you all saw how easy that was, yeah? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you all in the kitchen with me. Just gonna make sure that parsley get into contact with everything too because that adds a lovely flavor as well, believe it or not. Always a pleasure having you all in the kitchen with me. Meat and Fish Friday, Lenten season. I do hope you all get an opportunity to give this one a try. Taste it for salt at this point here. If you find it's a bit acidic because of all the tomato and everything else we have in there, a tiny bit of brown sugar will even out things for you. Irie? Irie.